Hi everyone, this is Team Segmentation Talk from Anderson Secondary School. We are participating in Global Cup Singapore Open 2022 Uniting category. My name is Lin Chang Jun. I have around six years of robotic experience. This is my first RoboCup Coast Race Rescue competition, and I participated in National Olympiad of Informatics. I'm Aidan Hao. I have around two years of robotic experience. This is my second RoboCup Coast Race Rescue competition, and I, I have also participated in MOI. The, so the main objective in the preliminary challenge is to pick up objects to gain points. Each object gives a different number of points and has a different size, in decreasing order of size, red, cyan, black, super, and super plus. Red giving 10, cyan 15, black 20, super 90, and super plus 180 points. Depositing is another objective. Each robot can only hold up to 6 objects. Depositing the, these objects will free up space for more objects and give points according to the objects deposited. Obstacles and traps will be present around the map. Going into a trap comes with a penalty of losing all the currently loaded objects in the points game for me. Going out of the border comes with a 10 second frozen penalty, so they should be avoided generally. There are also double point zones. The blue zones where all objects pick up there will have double the points when both picked up and deposited. Some areas, the grey area, will reduce the robot speed by 80% when you need. Ideally, they should be avoided. There are position info loss areas as well, the black outline parts. They will set the simulator's position X and Y to zero when stepping in it. Last but not least, is to have a strategy to, have ma to maximize the number of points gained with all of these factors. Here is a quick summary of the preliminary round map. There are two deposit zones at the top right corner and bottom left corner, which are orange color. It can also be seen that the red objects mainly concentrated at the double point zone, which, which is the blue color area, and the cyan objects mainly concentrated at the right side of the map, and the black object at the left. Here are our main strategies. Firstly, we want to find out what is the optimal combination of objects to pick up in order to maximize the number of points gained. But we, want, we also want to find the order which they should be collected and how they will be picked up. Secondly, navigating around the map. We implemented a strategy to avoid obstacles, some areas, the borders, and traps. We also dealt with the position info loss zones in order to get the most accurate position. Thirdly, targeting different parts of the map will be used to target things like concentrated areas of a specific object, of avoiding an undesirable area, and plan fighting to deposit those and support objects. Lastly, we have a strategy of how we should run our code. Now, it's the optimal combination of objects. Before we dive into, into the combination, I would like to highlight that there are red, cyan, and black objects around the map. They are worth 10, 15, and 20 points, respectively. Super objects that worth 90 points are made by a set of red, cyan, and black objects combined after deposited. There's also a super plus object that worth 180 points, uh, which is made by two sets of objects, which is two red, two cyan, and two black. Super object coordinate will also be given, which will be super useful information for the robot to pathfind. Here's a graph showing the scores for each combination, R for red, C for cyan, and B for black. Super objects will be picked up in this calculation as well. As seen, the one with one set of normal super objects gains 450 more points than full black. The two sets and super plus object perform significantly better with 450 more than R, C, B, B, B. So, we aim to get RRCCBB and collect the Super Plus objects. Next, ordering of objects that robot pick up should also be optimal to minimize time wastage. We try to get as many pairs of RRBBCC combo as possible to create Super Plus objects. And once there are six Super Plus objects, we will pick them all up. However, this was almost impossible and the super object pathfinding that we tried to implement had many bugs. So we decided to pick up whatever the robot encounters and deposit only when the robot is fully loaded with objects to minimize the number of depositing. But we will immediately deposit when there's super objects present in the load. As the saying goes, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. In order to avoid obstacles and others, we took a screenshot of the map 
simplify to make into simple colors with Microsoft. Open CV is then used to make a 2D array of the numbers for each color, such as one for wall or two for C spot. As, as we can see here, the left is the open C, uh, is the Microsoft pane, and it will be converted into a 2D array uh, for us to use to find. The new 2D array can now be used to avoid obstacles and others by detecting whether if the robot is in a bad spot in the array and avoiding it accordingly. However, color sensors are still used to avoid swamps and traps as a backup in case if the 2D array fails. Current units are used to avoid the border and ultrasonic sensors for walls, and steering also changes depending on how close the robot is to the wall. Dealing with position info loss, whenever position is not lost, we will use position X and position Y provided by the simulator. But once the robot enters the info loss zone, we will use sine and cosine to calculate the ratio of how much the position X and position Y will differ from the different previous position respectively. We will also take the average of the two views velocity divided by a constant to roughly calculate the robot position. These two ways allow us to extrapolate the robot position quite accurately, which will be super useful when the robot enters the info loss zone. As seen from the picture, the red objects are mainly concentrated in the double plane zones. Cyan mainly at the right side and black mainly at the left. Now pathfinding can be done to go to a section concentrated with an object that the robot is lacking in, such as going to the double point zone for when lacking in red objects and vice versa. For undesirable areas, coordinate can be used to block off a certain section of the map that's undesirable by diverting the robot away when the robot steps into a certain threshold. The perceived zones can be avoided when loaded object is not fixed as the robot tends to get stuck there due to the wall. The swarm area of this map has a regular shape and very obvious location, so coordinate can be used to avoid it as well. This is so that the robot won't step into the swarm and slow down by it. Since coordinates are given for the super object and deposit zones can be figured out, pathfinding can be used to find the shortest path between the robot and the target, as well as the path to it with the help of the 3D image. But the question is, what algorithm should be used? Now for the result of Presser Search, ASA, Dextrous, and Bellman Fault. After some thinking, we decided on ASA as it uses a heuristic, which is a distance from the robot to the target. It will pathfind towards the target more efficiently, so it will be faster than the other algorithms in most cases. As seen, the ASA search shoots towards the target and does not search any unnecessary spots to avoid time wasted. Unfortunately, we face a lot of bugs in the implementation and debugging phase, such as the robot did not follow the shortest path generated by the algorithm, and the super object did not store properly in the variable. Due to the severe time constraint, we decided to abandon this algorithm and resort to other algorithms. So we came up with a different strategy. Split the map into sections where each section has no obstacles in it. This means now section A can go to any other sections next to its safety. This can be done with some simple trigonometry and the path for the robot to go to the deposit zone can be go first computed by us beforehand. However, a drawback is that you will not be able to, to pathfind to super objects as they spawn at random locations. So instead, we kept track of whether a super object exists, existed within the same section. If it does, then go, go towards it. We decided to scrap the concentration area of objects as well since after a lack of time. Here is an example for the pathfinding for the proxy zones and super objects. If the robot is at section A, it will travel to section B, which is beside of it, and then at section E, which is next to section B, then enters the deposit zone. If the robot is at section G, it will go to the next section to it, which is section I, and later section F, before going into the deposit zone. We use the A10 tool function, basically inverse tangent with modifications, to calculate the appropriate angle for the robot to face in order to go to the spot. We use the built-in turn tool function provided by the simulator to turn to it and go towards it. 
For running of code, we have practiced running the code and downloading the competition map in the warm up round to familiarize ourselves with the flow of the competition. And during the competition day, we run the code for the entire day with an efficient strategy. We will have a minimum pacing target for the robot to achieve on the three minute time. If the robot did not meet the target, we will stop it. This is so that we will eliminate the worst cases and increase the chances for more other cases to occur. For implementation, we have to implement our own priority queue as A star requests it to be fast. And since C doesn't have a priority queue data structure, we also make shards to make things more organized like a pair shard to keep track of X and Y coordinates and also a node shard for all of the A star things. We spend many hours debugging by using the post space simulator debugging tool and print F in the terminal, but we still face many bugs that could not be fixed. So that's why our ASA had to be scrapped and the new strategy had to be adopted. Here is an entire flowchart of the program. It might seem complicated, but I'll break it down pieces by pieces. The progress starts on the green triangle block to check if there's six loaded objects. If yes, the robot will deposit the object, else the robot will check if there's any support object in the section the robot is currently at. If that's, there is, the robot will grab the support object. If not, the robot will just go in random motion till the robot detects objects on the ground and pick them up. If the robot faces any obstacles, it will avoid it. If there's none, the robot will just go straight. And this will be the flow of the program. So now the robot is picking up objects in a randomly moving around. When it's picking up its last object, and pair finding starts, it goes to the next section and then into the deposit zone. Then now it continues to get even more objects. And here it detects as a super object in the same section, so it goes to it, but it's still not perfect, as you can see. But it does eventually get it, and then now it, it prefines the deposit zone. Then it continues to pick up even more objects. I find this competition very interesting as we are able to apply the knowledge gain to the real world. For example, concepts such as path finding can be applied to find the shortest path, such as the Google Map shortest path algorithm, but implemented it on robot. Extrapolating the robot future position will also be useful as position will not be given in real life, and there will be cases where there's no signal. Increasing efficiency will also be useful to reduce time taken to finish a specific task. Lastly, Avoiding obstacle can be used in car autopilot technology like the Tesla car that's very popular now, as it can detect nearby obstacle and avoid them efficiently. In conclusion, the strategies that we implemented drastically improves it. From an average score of 300 without the strategies to an average of 1,300 after the changes, we managed to get 1,930 for a with an ideal run. Our main weaknesses was that were that the robot was not very good at picking up normal objects as the concentration of the object strategy had to be scrapped. Obstacle avoidance was still not that good even after the changes and super object pathfinding was inefficient as it only pathfinds when in the same set section. But in general, we were quite happy with our score but think we, we could have done much better. For further improvement, I think we can fix the ASAR algorithm and use it on deposit zones and super object and concentrated areas searching, which will be a big game changer. We will also change our game plan to pick up the RRCCDB combo instead of whatever robot encounters. We will also try to have a better obstacle and storm avoidance to prevent the robot getting stuck or slow down. We will also only pick up super object when the six or when the time is low. We will also immediately deposit if the time is extremely low, for example, 50 seconds. The main things that we learned are for how the co-speed robot works, how running code on it works, how it processes things every take, and the general format of the code. We also learned how A-Start works, the heuristics for it, and that it guarantees the shortest path. 
I also learned how trigger number three can be applied to many things despite seeming to have nothing to do with math. Open CV, open CV was also learned to process images and generate 2D array from it. We learned how to efficiently debug as well with the help of visualizing things, debugging tools, and breaking things down so to many simple tasks to understand what it does and if there's anything wrong with it. And most importantly, we learn when it's time to give up on a certain idea and, and adopt a new strategy, especially when running out of time. We would like to show our gratitude to our seniors who have guided us throughout the competition. We also like to thank our teachers for giving us the opportunity to participate in this competition. We also want to thank the organizers for organizing and managing such an interesting competition. Lastly, we would like to sign off with a quote. No matter how much force on us, we keep plowing ahead. That's the only way to keep the roads clear. By Greg Kincaid. This quote summarizes our experience pretty well, that we need to persist even when facing a huge lack of time and many issues. But at the end of it all, things will work out. Thank you for, Thank you for our attention and have a nice day.